We have an important update tonight on a story we first told you about last month. An Alaska news source investigation uncovered high levels of silica dust in the city's people mover buses. Now, contractors will soon retest the affected areas, and bus drivers will be medically evaluated. Meanwhile, some drivers say if they're forced to wear masks because of the dust, they'll quit, which could impact public transportation services throughout Anchorage. Investigative reporter Mike Mason spoke with drivers, and he has some new information, Mike. That's right. For the next three months, a third-party contractor will retest the air quality in and around the buses. Meanwhile, drivers will be required to do a fit test to see if their health has been, has been affected. So now the city will have to reassess how it's going to handle the situation moving forward as some drivers begin lashing out about the department's style of management. This is the dust in the dust barn. Video of a dust cloud taken this past May at the place where city buses go at the end of the day for cleaning and repairs. Ridiculous. It's the Anchorage Department of Transportation's bus barn. Workers refer to it as the dust barn. There's an extraction fan in there, and, and it's broken. In April, driver Timothy Hardesty shot this video of a vent inside one of the buses. There again. Oh, that got it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Every spring for the past nine years, I've contracted bronchitis. Now more bus drivers are coming forward to talk about safety issues, particularly air quality. It gets really bad. The video doesn't even give it justice to the actual problem. This driver fears retaliation, so we're concealing his identity. We'll call him James. James says the dust has caused him and other drivers breathing problems. I personally have used a product to essentially rinse my nose out after work because it's so caked up. In May, after Hardesty filed an OSHA complaint about the dust, inspectors began testing the facility in and around the buses. In seven cases, the levels were above the acceptable limits. Drivers were also tested. The municipality was fined nearly $80,000 and has been ordered to do follow-up testing for a period of 90 days. So there are some controls that they're going to have to do now to reduce those levels and protect the workers. If those levels are still high at the end of testing, there's a chance drivers could be mandated to shave facial hair and wear masks. I'm not shaving my beard for anybody. James says he and other drivers will quit if they're forced to shave. Yes, I have to find someplace else to go. You'll actually quit over it? Yeah. Yeah. James blames management for letting the problem get this far. He says the city's public transportation department has a history of letting safety issues get out of control. Such as this bus that was driving on tires so worn out that you can see the steel threads. If the bus tires would have blown out the front tires, the driver would have lost steering and control and possibly could have gone into a major accident. James says these images were taken in June of last year and the city has since addressed the issue. It now requires drivers to inspect buses before each trip. So we have some really great um, features added. We contacted the director of the city's public transportation department, Jamie Acton. She said in part, bus operators are required to perform pre-trip inspections and are to immediately report all safety concerns, hazards, or violations to appropriate supervisory personnel, including dispatch. Issues identified en route and reported to dispatch are assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Depending on the nature of the issue, a bus operator may receive a vehicle trade-out. Upon assessment of the specific issue by dispatch and operations and determination that it is safe to do so, an operator may be requested to continue operations. Five drivers we spoke with say they've complained to their supervisors about a number of safety violations, such as bad air quality, leaking fluids, and four-way flashers not working. And they all claim dispatchers told them to drive the buses anyway. They want the buses to continue to operate constantly so they make more money. Drivers like yeah. James and others we spoke with share a negative view of the department's overall management style. Oof, management is, uh, management's looking out for themselves. And they're not looking out for the drivers or, in my opinion, or the public. The Teamsters Union that represents Anchorage bus drivers had no comment for our story. The Transportation Department tells us it's going to hire a full-time safety coordinator 
once funding is secured. The city says it will consider hiring an industrial hygienist who can oversee some of these safety issues.